Thanks for staying with us right here on Sunrise as we continue this morning. Now, following the recent pictures that have been doing rounds on social media regarding the principal of Recher Park High School having sex with a learner, teachers across schools have been on the spotlight. Now, there have been numerous pleads that the Department of Basic Education or South African Council of Educators should name and shame the educators who sleep with their learners. This morning, we are discussing the role of teachers and what should be done to curb sex, uh, sex in schools. Now, to talk more about uh, that, we are now joined by the spokesperson of uh, South African Council of Educators, Temin Kosinjovu, and also we have uh, Matakanye, Matakanye from the National Association of School Governing Bodies. Remember, you at home can be part of uh, giving us a call on 011-447-1742 or 011-1620. Why are the children sleeping with teachers? And why are the teachers sleeping with the children? That's what we're talking about uh, this morning. What are the factors behind that? Good morning, uh, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. So these are the, you know, the school governing bodies consist of parents, right? Okay. So these are the children that are sent to school to go learn. Yes. And then we see uh, these recent developments where uh, principals, educators are sleeping with children. Firstly, the parents, uh, what is their understanding of the situation? These are their children who are being violated. Uh, we, we're not seeing them like outraged and doing, trying to deal with this at schools. How are, they, how, how are the, the parents ma managing this, th these problems? Uh, good morning, uh, Penny, once again, and good morning, ENCA, all the listeners. Um, firstly, Penny, maybe even before I answer your question, is that we, we, as parents, I think we have to really apologize to our parents, I mean to our children, mm -hmm. that as parents in South Africa particularly, we are continuously failing our children. Because the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, the teachers, the principals, are parents mm -hmm. as well. You know, then uh, there is a, a principle that talks about the local parenting. When we leave for work, then we take children to the school, which is the second home, and they are looked after by parents. Now, you see, you can't expect parents to sleep with children. Now. Uh, we have to apologize and again up, up, uh, uh, blame ourselves because these things could not just happen without really picking them up early because ch these children uh, as parents we are failing them we don't talk to them mm -hmm. when they come back f from school and say how was the school how did you learn what was interesting today what was and these children will tell you then you pick them up quickly and you report this, this matter quickly before they even, uh, I mean, you, you remember the, the eight big coma, eight with the, yeah, with, the, the, with the primary school uh, students, uh, children who were, were abused there by, by one of the, the guards. Before we, we, we get to that, do educators actually, uh, Mr. Ndlovu, even consider themselves parents or they separate themselves from that responsibility? Because if they are, why are they sleeping with the students? I think we need to indicate, Penny, from the onset that the majority of our teachers in our schools do regard themselves as parents. The majority of teachers in our schools do treat children with respect. It is only a minority of these people who are perpetuating this kind of acts that we need as a nation to isolate, identify, and be able to let authorities deal with them. Mm. Our teachers in the main, we are aware that they work under very trying conditions. However, they do their best to act as parents. Mm. That is why even if you look at the number of cases that are getting reported, it is not the majority of teachers that are doing. But however, I must indicate that the few that are doing these things are bringing this profession into disrepute. And as society looks at teachers, they then are able to say all teachers or teachers are doing these things. However, as council, we are aware that the majority of our teachers are acting as parents and doing what they're supposed to do.
Now, the role of the school governing a, a body in, in, in the schools uh, is, is to foster involvement of, of parents in, in their children's uh, education. I mean, you made the example of the, the primary school. It was going on over time. It takes so long if it was like so many students. And in this incident of that recent incident, this happened like a, a while back. W what sort of like plans are there in the system to be able to pick these things up early when they, when they happen? Let's say these, let's say that as you were saying, the parents are not talking to their children, they failed. But w w what closes that gap uh, within, between the, the students and, and then the parents in the schools? There are code of conducts. Uh, Temba is here. Uh, they are controlling teachers in terms of their behavior. Uh, and I think uh, we also have to work closely with, uh, with police. Uh, then we have to work closely with, with SACE so that they discipline their, their, their teachers. Mm. They discipline their teachers. And all the stakeholders involved in schools, as much as we make policies, I think you asked the role of the school government to make policies, mm. but we don't make policies such as the code of conduct for teachers, the code of conduct for public works, pub, 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 se, 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 uh, public service, mm. I mean like uh, the, 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 the... The people the, who work in the school. That's correct. Yeah. We are only a school government body able to formulate policy that regulate the behavior of children. That, that's, 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 the, that's where the scope is. Okay. But, but I think uh, we really have to work closely with, with the uh, South African uh, Council of Educators, police and all those, so that really, and it should not be every year that we come here and apologize. Every year come here and apologize for our children. What programs do you have uh, as a council of, of educators to, to identify this problem with teach teachers who are problematic? How do you, do you have anything that can sort of like pick this up earlier on? Preventative matters, measures. Maybe let me indicate one of the things that we did last year was to conduct research on what are the factors that causes of this problem. What environments are available are, are there that perpetuate this kind of activity? We've come up with a research kind of uh, report mm. to that effect. What were the findings? And one of the things that I can identify that we have picked up was these things happen in a number of environments, mm -hmm. in our schools, more especially in schools where you find some people have got the small offices, laboratories, libraries, and so on. In the main, mm. that's why we're picking up these things. These kinds of activities happen in the homes of teachers, mm -hmm. where kids are sent to homes of teachers, and, and so on and so on. The research in itself is telling us that as a nation, we need to look at these aspects. We need to look at how closely do we deal with the smaller and offices in our schools mm. to be able to make sure that these activities don't take place okay. in those areas. So